Hi, welcome back. I think we have the management of Biocon joining us now We're, with regards to the key to FI13 numbers. Kiran Mazumdar Shaw, the CMD of Biocon, is here to talk about that. Hi, Mrs. Shaw. Thanks very much for joining in. Uh, just going to start with the segmental revenues this time round. It's been an uh, across-the-board growth. Can you just give us some sense in terms of FI13 guidance? What would the segments, for example, Biopharma, branded formulations, as well as the CRAMS business look like? Well, basically, uh, the uh, biopharma business is gaining traction in emerging markets and in the U.S., where uh, in the emerging markets we are seeing our APIs and insulins, uh, you know, gaining a lot of traction. Uh, in the uh, U.S., both tacrolimus and fidoxamycin have uh, really had uh, good growth. And these are really what are driving growth. So you can see that our biopharma business, uh, excluding the branded formulations, has grown 20% uh, year on year. Branded formulations has actually grown 45%. And this is something which uh, we are very focused on. As you know, we are very uh, keen on making sure that this segment de uh, delivers good growth for uh, Biocon, given that it has grown from a low base. And we want this to be a 500 crore uh, vertical by uh, the next fiscal. So I think this is something that we are very focused on and, and uh, very confident that we can actually build very strong brand value and a uh, strong and large growth uh, segment on. Okay. Uh, Kiran, you have... Um, uh, okay. Uh, you have uh, 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 increased your R&D expenditure considerably. What are you expecting to churn out yes. of this and how soon? Well, you know, Lata, uh, uh, this whole research uh, investment uh, that I'd like to call it and not research expenditure mm -hmm. is something which is very inherent and integral to our business. This is an investment that needs to be made in order to deliver exponential growth in the future. And <coughs> excuse me, as we get into the clinic, these spends are going to increase. Mm. So what you are seeing today is a 57% increase in R&D investment. Mm. And this is driving all our various uh, programs, such as insulin and our novel programs. No, mm. I uh, appreciate, uh, yes, uh, Kiran, I take your point that uh, it's an integral part of the company's growth. I'm not contesting that you're spending more money on it. What I'm asking is if you can give us some timetable of what you see as uh, potentially lucrative candidates uh, and by what time will the company uh, be able to harvest uh, the money that is being invested? Yeah, yeah. I, I'll, I'll try and answer that Lata. First and foremost, uh, we have announced this quarter that we have seen some good data coming out of our recombinant human insulin uh, program in Europe. So this basically allows us to uh, seek marketing authorization in 2015. Mm. So this is something that will basically start realizing, uh, you know, returns for us in developed markets from then on. Mm. Glargene is also progressing well. It involves greater R&D investment. We have the money in place considering uh, the fact that we have the Pfizer money mm. to actually advance all these programs. Biosimilars, as you know, is something that we've partnered with Mylan. In the interim, you are going to see a very large growth opportunity for Biocon in the insulin segment in the emerging markets. We are already gaining a lot of traction in many emerging markets, LATAM, Mexico, Middle East, North Africa, Southeast Asia. This is something that is really going to drive uh, growth for Biocon uh, in the coming uh, years. Hmm. If you look at our novel programs, hmm. IN105 is something that has... Uh, incurred R&D investment and going forward it will incur uh, more investment. Having said that, we are in very advanced stages of finalizing our development uh, partnership with, uh, with a large uh, pharma. Uh, we are looking at uh, licensing uh, and partnering our Itolizumab or our CD6 program, which should happen in the next uh, uh, 12 months. And then we are looking at also partnering our uh, anti-CD20 program, the BVX20 program, which we are just about, where we are just about to enter the clinic. That also will probably get partnered over the next one or two years. So I think 
the timelines for novel molecules and for biosimilars unfortunately is much longer than generic programs mm. and therefore you are looking at a timeline of you know anywhere between mm. one to three years before mm. you see any returns on these kind of investments but we are very confident that uh, the returns are going to be of a very large magnitude. Sure, Mrs. Uh, Shaw just actually wanted to focus on a two-part question. One was with IN105, which is basically your oral insulin. You did mention that there is a possible licensing deal with, uh, which is possibly on the cards at this point in time. Can you just throw some more light with regards to the contours of it and which markets would it possibly be focused on and by when could it possibly culminate? And would you actually be looking to possibly uh, find a different partner besides five for the deal that you uh, earlier had in place with them? Well, I'll, I'll answer your questions in two parts. As far as IN105 is concerned, there is a lot of uh, uh, clinical de development required uh, ahead of a well-designed you know, designed phase 3 clinical trial. So I think there is some time to go before you can see this, mar this molecule in the market. So I do want to uh, be cautious about uh, you know managing expectations because I think this is a very exciting program but it is going to take quite a few years before you see this product commercialized. Having said that we are engaged and we are in advanced stages of finalizing a development uh, uh, you know license with a large pharma so mm. initially it is going to be a back-ended deal mm. so that's not uh, something that is going to uh, you know, generate a huge amount of uh, licensing income for us in the in the in the short term, but it does have uh, the uh, profile of generating pretty large uh, licensing income for us uh, mm. over time. Okay. Actually, uh, Mr. When it Shaw, comes to, uh, uh, yeah, sure, go ahead. So it is going to be a back-ended deal, as I mentioned. When it comes to uh, finding a partner in place of uh, Pfizer for the developed markets, mm. yes, I think we are in the process of engaging with several uh, companies who can fill that space. Okay. You have this uh, uh, interesting deal with uh, GE Capital picking up stake in Sinjin. Uh, how close are we to an IPO? You know, Lata, to answer that question, I think uh, when we looked at taking Sinjin uh, to the market, we realized that the valuation that the market was according uh, to Biocon, uh, we felt was not optimal. Mm. And we believed that unless we created a benchmark valuation for Sinjin, we would be undervaluing Sinjin when we took it to the market. As you know, we've never wanted to take Sinjin to the market just to raise capital. Mm -hmm. It was more to unlock value for Sinjin. And I think we believe that at a time when the markets are not really valuing companies uh, at opti uh, opt as optimally as we want them to value, mm -hmm. we felt that this PE uh, route of uh, getting GE Capital, which is a high-quality investor, to take a stake in Sinjin would really start unlocking the right valuation for Sinjin before we took it to mm. the market. Now, why GE? Because, you know, I think there were many suitors who wanted to get in, uh, to have a stake in, in, in uh, Sinjin. But we believe that GE was the best uh, investor for Sinjin because GE itself, in its organization, has some leading edge expertise in life science based technologies, especially in biologics. And we felt that this would actually allow uh, Sinjin to, you know, further differentiate itself and uh, be in a position to offer enhanced uh, research services to its global customers. Mm. So I think this has to be taken as an investor and an investment that goes beyond just the financial investment. Okay, Mrs. Shaw, just before we wrap up uh, the interview, just had one last question with regards to the R&D expenditure because that is on an upswing. Uh, any sort of pressure that you would possibly factor in in terms of margins going forward for Biocon? Because that is actually one key concern with analysts that uh, your R&D expenditure would uh, scale up quite significantly, hence would pressure margins going forward. Well, you can see that despite R&D investments increasing, in fact, they've increased 57% year on year, 
despite the fact that we have had to contend with uh, rising fuel costs and therefore increasing power costs, despite the fact that we have had to contend with increased personnel costs and uh, higher import uh, costs because of the depreciating rupee, we have still delivered an 8% increase in both at a PAT level and at a, at a uh, EBITDA level. Uh, I might also add that we have seen many of our EOUs uh, lose uh, tax, uh, you know, uh, uh, tax benefits, and therefore we have also had to take a much bigger tax uh, hit uh, this uh, half. So, given all that, I think we have done extremely well. And I would also like to once again emphasize that R&D is an integral part of Biocon's business, and I think we are going to see increased R&D spends. And I think uh, this is, as I said, to be taken as an R&D investment mm. because this, we are investing in growth. And uh, I think we would like uh, analysts and investors to understand that unless we invest in R&D, and these spends are only going to increase because as molecules go into the clinic, the spends are going to increase. Same but point. going into the clinic is also a reflection of advancing these programs. Mm -hmm. So I think it has to be looked at in the right context. R&D spends are going to increase, but so is our business going to increase. So we will have to build models where we can sustain such R&D investments. Fair point, Kiran. Fair point. Uh, point taken, and that is perhaps the next level to which uh, Indian pharmaceutical industry should ascend. Thanks a lot for joining us uh, with your numbers and with those details. We have to take a break. We have more corporates waiting by. We are back in a jiffy.